Your Excellency, as presiding officer of the Scottish Parliament, I would like, on behalf of all members, to extend a very well, warm welcome to you, to your first minister, your Minister for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, and the High Commissioner, on this your first official visit to the Scottish Parliament. I know that you have had an extremely busy programme, not least your participation in the recent Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London, so I'm particularly pleased that you have chosen to follow in the footsteps of your predecessors by addressing us here in our debating chamber, and we look forward to hearing from you very shortly. And while your visit here today, Mr. President, is the fourth by a sitting Malawian head of state since this parliament was established in 1999, not all of your predecessors have had the opportunity, uh, as you have had this afternoon, to observe some of our parliamentary proceedings. And in that regard, I do hope you found our weekly session of First Minister's Questions both interesting and informative. And at the very least, I trust that it has provided you with a, a flavour of the political debate here in Holyrood. And Mr. President, as you know, the people of Scotland and Malawi share a very special bond. Our histories intertwining since the middle of the 19th century, when our very own Dr. David Livingston first set foot on the shores of Lake Malawi. And if we fast forward 150 plus years from Dr. Livingston's first tentative steps there, there is not a community, a school, a constituency or a parish in Scotland today that does not enjoy a special bond of friendship or a connection, whether that be economic, social, academic or spiritual, with your country. And if I may say, not a bad legacy from a former cotton mill worker from Blantyre. To that list of connections, may I add, Mr. President, this very Parliament. We are proud of Scotland's historical ties with Malawi and are pleased that our relationship with your National Assembly is based on friendship, mutual respect and trust. This has ensured that the partnership between our two legislatures is one of the strongest and longest running in our relatively short history. Since 2005, members and officials of the Scottish Parliament and the National Assembly of Malawi have paid numerous reciprocal visits under the auspices of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. And as a progressive, forward-looking parliament with an international outlook, we have benefited greatly from working with our Malawian counterparts. While some of the challenges we face may differ, we both share a common desire to improve the governance of our nations, its laws, its economic performance, and through these areas, the lives of our citizens. Mr. President, I know from speaking to many of my parliamentary colleagues that the long-standing relationship between the Scottish Parliament and the National Assembly is highly valued, and that the friendships and professional relationships forged since 2005 mean that Malawi remain a focus of our activity in sub-Saharan Africa for many years to come. And in that spirit of friendship, can I want to see, once again say how delighted I am to welcome you here, Mr President, and I now invite you to address this meeting of members of the Scottish Parliament. Presiding Officer of the Scottish Parliament, Right Honourable Members of the Scottish Parliament, the Right Honourable First Minister, leaders of all political parties, friends, people of Scotland and Malawi, wherever you are. I come to Scotland to celebrate with you the journey of friendship we have walked for 159 years. This avoid friendship began when David Livingstone arrived in Yasland in 1859. David Livingstone named one of our cities Blanda. When he got independence in 1964, we changed the name of Yasland to Malawi. We changed all the colonial names of Rose places, towns, and everything. But we never changed Blantyne. That tells you how we have remained connected and friendly to Scotland. David Livingston has a great place in our heart and a greater place in human history. 
when God gave children of Israel the light of the world that came to Europe, it was Livingstone who carried that light and brought Christianity to our part of the world. Since then, Christianity has played a critical role in creating a value system that we share and found our societies. In fact, I am myself a product of the Church of Scotland that gave me my education, my early education. My father was a teacher and an elder of Church of Scotland Mission School. My mother was one of the women of the Guild of the Church of Scotland. We share a past and we share values. And we say in the wisdom of my people, those who walk the common path is they share a common destination. Now between us, we are founding the Malawi Scotland Partnership. This partnership is founded on mutual respect, which is rare and precious, given the North-South relations in our world order today. The mutual respect for our cultures is everywhere. I've seen Scottish people dressed in Malay attire here in Scotland. I've even seen humanity in people like Colin and Ison Cameron, who speak my language and call themselves Malawians. I've seen Scottish people celebrate the spirit of Mal Malawian culture. There is no greater humility than to assume another person's culture out of free will. We have seen Scottish people in Malawi villages, living our life to support our people. We have seen them working with our teachers and feeding the Malawi school child. We have seen them working in farming, in water, in climate change, and economic development. We have seen Scottish professionals train healthcare providers in mental health problems. When the mentally ill are feared and stigmatized, Scottish professionals have found a cause. We have seen your surgeons, scholars, and civil society organizations doing great work in Malawi. We have seen much more than I can tell. I must surprised that nearly half the population of this country can tell you about a personal friend or family member with a connection to Malawi. This is what it means to have a people-to-people -people partnership. The Malawi Scotland Partnership has become one of the strongest North-South relationships in the world. Such relationships rare and precious in a world where, paradoxically, developed countries like exploiting and manipulating poor countries in the name of supporting them. At the government, government level, our bilateral relations are very encouraging. Scotland has been our voice. You spoke for us when we needed aid resumption, and you speak for us to end the exploitation of double taxation. You spoke for us when floods swept Malawi, when drought failed our crops, when our people suffered from hunger. You support us. Count on Malawi. You will always speak for you on the African table. Right, honorable members, let me now speak about Malawi. Let me speak about Malawi. Here in the Western world, we may know the Malawi that we need to read about. You may know the Malawi created in the perceptions of those who speak and write about us. But the real Malawi out there is a country that makes progress in many areas. Malawi is a country where African democracy works. It's a country where freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and liberal conscience thrives. There has not been a single prison of conscience in prison since I became head of state four years ago. We have now been in denial because you don't solve a problem by denying it. But the challenge of fighting problems like corruption in Malawi are threefold. First, 
There came a point when corruption was becoming a culture in my mind, being accepted as the normal way of doing things. I came at a time when this culture was growing. This, this culture, which was symbolized by the infamous casket, the worst plunder of an African country in history. When you fight culture, it is on people that you fight. And it takes a process to reverse a culture, how I see the demand conclusive solutions now or never. The second challenge is when, that when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. You find people who have stolen money enough to sponsor a war against you. In our case, the most vicious PR machine was unleashed to make my government look like more corrupt than the most corrupt of them all. The third change is politicization of corruption. Where government accepts the presence of the problem, many institutions, including the church, the media, and the opposition, are in denial. Some people believe that corruption is for politicians, government officials only. They are wrong. They, they, they believe they are not part of the problem. Opposition makes a political agenda for fighting the government. They exaggerate and read stories in the social media which are completely false. But for us to fight corruption, we must fight collectively. We are making progress in the World Justice Report, and Malawi is now on the full impressive performance in Sub-Saharan Africa in the fight against corruption. Malawi is a country where the fight against corruption now works. Malawi is a country where economic management works. Four years ago, Malawi was a broken economy falling apart after the devastation of cash. The economy was on the brink of collapse and the country on the verge of bankruptcy. In fact, we had a deficit that almost equaled our annual national budget. Four years ago, inflation was 24%, while brought down inflation down to 7.8%. Four years ago, interest rates were 25%. Today, interest rates are at 16%. Four years ago, our foreign currency import cover was below two months, the lowest in history. Today, our import cover is six months, the highest in the history of Malawi. Not long ago, GDP growth rate was 2.4%, and today it is about 6%. Four years ago, our low currency was volatile and unpredictable. Today, the low currency is stable and predictable. We have achieved macroeconomic stability, and the economy is beginning to grow. Contrary to the high perception of Malawi, well proved that if you take sound economic money to turn around an economy in spite of crisis and the absence of donor support, no other African country ever did in three years what Malawi has done. Honorable members of this house, this is our story. Three years ago, with a double tragedy of natural floods and drought in one year. Our crops failed and there was hunger throughout the country. Two years ago, with another drought and crops failed again, there was national hunger. Throughout this time, Malawi had no budget support from any donor, we are achieving economic recovery without donor budget support through crises of national disasters. This story should give you, the Scottish people and the world, every confidence that Malawi is a country you can trust. Right, one of our members. Malawi and Scotland have now signed the Malawi Scotland Growth Partnership Agreement. Together, we are now close to pursue our goals and conquer our targets within the consensus of the global community. 
In Malawi, we are determined to make Malawi a producing and exporting country. That is our vision. We are determined to Malawi from aid to trade and achieve economic autonomy. Therefore, we have lined up a number of programs drive Malawi to prosperity. The first is Green Belt Initiative. We are diversifying, commercializing, and expanding our agricultural productivity. We are set to use irrigation, step of value addition, bring about food security, and make agriculture the driver of our industrialization. Our second project is foreign direct investment. We are inviting investors from all, all corners of the world, including Scotland. We want to have a smaller government and a bigger private sector that drives the economy and provides jobs for all Malawians. Our third program is skills development. We are creating a skilled labor force because no society can develop without a skilled labor force. Therefore, we are building technical community colleges across the country the way of investing the youth, creating jobs, and creating a skilled labor force for our direct investors. Our fourth program is infrastructure development. We are building new roads, expanding airports, reviving the rail system, taking electricity to all people, and bringing faster internet to every community. Right, one of our members, we are setting foundation and indeed setting the stage for phenomenal economic growth in Malawi. We invite Scotland to continue to be part of Malawi's transformation. Scotland has been a true and trusted friend to the people of Malawi. We look forward to a deeper friendship. Let the world learn from our friendship. Time has come for the West to define Africa as a mutual partner. Times come for the West to accept, but with our resources, Africa does also contribute to the economies of the West. We both achieve more by working together as mutual partners. Long live our friendship. May God bless Malawi and may God bless Scotland. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Zikomo, Mr. President. And can I now call on the First Minister to respond on behalf of the Scottish Government? Your Excellency, President Matarika, Foreign Minister, High Commissioner, Presiding Officer, it is an honour to welcome you here to our National Parliament today. You have, as the Presiding Officer indicated, just had the pleasure, if that is the right word, of watching First Minister's questions. And you might have noticed that the parties in this chamber do not always agree uh, with each other. But we are, and we always have been, absolutely united in recognising the value and the importance of the friendship between Scotland and Malawi. As you have so eloquently set out today, the ties between our nations are unique and they are very special. They go back more than 150 years to the expeditions of David Livingstone and the early missions of the Church of Scotland. That indeed is why the first overseas head of state to address this parliament was your predecessor, uh, President Dr Malusi, in the year 2000. And the first to speak in this chamber in 2005 was your late brother, the then President Mutarika. And when he spoke on that day, he was marking the first partnership agreement between Scotland and Malawi. And he signed it alongside one of my predecessors, Jack, now Lord McConnell, whose contribution I want to acknowledge and pay tribute to today. At the signing itself, the president described the 2005 agreement as setting a new pattern in global relations 
because it twinned a country in the north with a partner in the south. It is also marked to a truly remarkable degree, not simply by agreement between our governments, but by cooperation amongst our people. The Scotland-Malawi partnership includes universities, colleges, schools, faith groups, businesses, charities, social enterprises, and many, many other organisations. Indeed, as you have mentioned, almost 100,000 people in Scotland are directly involved in the partnership, just as are almost 200,000 people in Malawi. And together, we have achieved some extraordinary results. More than 10,000 women have been screened for cervical cancer. More than 100,000 people in southern Malawi received emergency treatment for meningitis. We've helped to quadruple the annual number of medical graduates in Malawi. Hundreds of women teachers have been trained and new national educational standards have been implemented. In addition, representatives from Police Scotland provide advice and support to their counterparts in Malawi on tackling violence against women. And programmes supported by Scotland have brought renewable energy to more than 80,000 people in rural Malawi. Our partnership has helped to change lives and transform communities. And as everybody in this chamber and across Scotland recognises, these partnerships don't just benefit Malawi, these partnerships benefit Scotland as well. We gain a great deal from new perspectives and new ideas. Scottish school children, when they learn about Malawi, become better global citizens as a result. And in very practical terms, many of our joint projects, such as sharing health data, will help both of our nations. And as Malawi's economy develops, we're both determined that our relationship will be characterised by mutually beneficial trade and investment. I know you have been heartened by the outcomes of your discussions on that during the last week here in Scotland. And of course, for all of these reasons and for many more, on Monday, you and I signed a new Global Goals Partnership Agreement. That new agreement reflects our shared commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Your Excellency, when you were inaugurated as President, you pledged that Malawi will strive to be a friend to everyone in the global community. Scotland similarly strives to be a good global citizen. For both of us, our new Global Goals Partnership is an important way of achieving those ambitions that we share. And of course, in renewing the agreement between our countries, we also reaffirm the enduring values that lie behind it. And we recognise that they are fittingly ones which also drove David Livingstone over 150 years ago. Values of a passionate internationalism, a commitment to education and healthcare, and perhaps most of all, a fundamental belief in the rights and the equality of all people. So Your Excellency, it is an honour and a real pleasure for this Parliament to host you and your delegation today. To do so as we reflect on our historic ties, as we recognise what we have achieved together in recent years. And more than that, as we look forward with ambition, imagination and confidence to many more years of partnership and friendship between our two nations, Scotland and Malawi. Thank you, First Minister. Thank you, Mr President. Uh, I would invite members and our guests to join us in 15 minutes in the members' room for a reception and an opportunity to meet with the President. And on that, I close this meeting of members of Parliament.